Big, big news. Apple has just released the Pro version of their M1 MacBooks, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. And now when I say big news, I mean this is actually big news. Not just this is a clickbaity game changer type thing that a lot of people say, like this is actually a game changer for creatives. I might argue that this is one of the biggest steps forward that Apple has made for creatives since the original Macintosh. Let me explain. Okay, so here's how this video is gonna go. First, I'm gonna talk through why this is actually such a big deal, and then I'm gonna try to outline which of these MacBook Pros should you maybe be considering purchasing. And I'll also just say right off the top, I am not gonna just rattle off all the specs. There are plenty of other videos on YouTube, or you can just go to the website and read it yourself. First things first, a little bit of a history lesson. Now, Apple really grew to prominence on the back of creatives. You see, back in the day, Apple really pioneered the what you see is what you get and graphic interface for things like PageMaker. The Macintosh allowed for recording artists to bring the Mac into the studio. And that's how we had a rise of the 80s jams that we're all still grooving along to today. And while this trend did begin in the 80s with the Macintosh, it has been a heavy emphasis of Apple for years. They've gone through great efforts to align the brand with creatives and rebels in their movie placements. They've also had historical brand campaigns such as Think Different, which was really capped off by the commercial to the crazy ones. And then 2016 came and Apple made the bold decision to remove a lot of the things that creatives especially sort of relied upon to do their jobs. The idea here was that USB-C was the future and that really we didn't need to plug in things all that much. However, consumers, especially creatives, have loads of devices that do need to be plugged into their computer, many of them made by Apple. And we entered an era where we suddenly needed a dongle for everything. And Apple went from being a company for creatives to being a dongle company. And their pro machines went from pro machines to overpriced dongle holders. But now with these new MacBook Pros, Apple has finally given us a product that is really designed for their core audience, creatives. We're getting back SD cards, we're getting back an HDMI port, we're getting back our beloved MagSafe charger, and we're even getting back our top row of keys. It's almost like old is new in some weird retro dongle-free sort of way. At this point, it's like there's not really anything that we can complain about. So why does any of this really matter? Well, having a machine that's really designed specifically for creatives, it helps us be more efficient, it helps our workflow, it helps us be more mobile, and it helps us save time. Now let's be honest, ports and keyboards are nice and all, but that is really not the shining star of these new M1 Pro and M1 Pro Max MacBooks. The shining star is of course the internals, the M1 Pro itself and the M1 Max. Now we've seen even from the consumer level of M1 Max that these integrated chips are really nothing short of engineering genius. It is probably one of the single biggest leaps in computing in many, many years. Being a pro and having a pro machine is all about your workflow, all about your efficiency, and all about having a machine that does what you want it to do instead of sitting around waiting for it to load, listening to the fans go off like you're about to take off a fighter jet and being distracted by a nice rainbow spinning ball. So now this is great. Apple has finally given us exactly what we wanted. Now the question becomes, which of these is best for you? Now the honest answer for many people and even a lot of professionals is that the base M1 models are usually good enough. So even if you're just getting that kind of baseline M1 Pro, you're still gonna get about double the performance of the M1. So most people are good to go with just that base M1 Pro model. I know that most of the people who watch this channel are either photographers or videographers, so I'm gonna try to stay in that sort of wheelhouse. With respect to photo editing, most photo editing software is still constrained to single core use. So the difference between the Pro and the Max is kind of a wash here. Honestly, you're pretty unlikely to be limited by the graphics or GPU performance of your machine if you're running things like Capture One, Lightroom, DxO, et cetera. And Lightroom's actually gotten a lot better at leveraging GPU performance from your machine more recently. So I'd say unless you're going with the baseline eight core, 14 inch M1 Pro, you're probably going to be fine. So I'd say at least get that 10 core M1 Pro. Now, with those who are also doing video editing, the M1 chips already have 10-bit 422 hardware decode support, making them one of the best viable solutions for things like the Canon R5 or the Sony a7S III. That said, if you're not doing Final Cut and you're editing on either DaVinci or Premiere, it's likely that you're gonna feel a little bit constrained unless you have either 32 or 64 gigabytes of RAM. So I'd say even though the M1 Max is mostly supposed to be rated for that 8K footage, I really think if you're getting into these more higher bitrate 4K video files, I think that's probably about the time you should consider doing the M1 Max. 
I would personally say it's probably safer to future proof yourself. You're going to have this machine for quite a long time. And I would probably go with the M1 Max in this instance. And then whatever your budget can afford, either 32 or 64 gigs of RAM. With respect to storage, I think you should probably stick between one to two terabytes. Any more than that, and you're really better off spending that money on a better, nice external drive. You don't really need eight terabytes locally on your machine. I personally went with the two terabyte option. That way I can edit off of my local drive for all of my current video projects and then offload everything onto my NAS once it's completed. Keep in mind that these are Thunderbolt equipped machines. So what you could do is you could buy a Thunderbolt SSD enclosure, put in any size SSD you want in there, and then you could use that as your editing drive or even a storage drive if you would like to. This should really only cost you about 300 bucks for an enclosure plus a two terabyte Samsung drive. Side note, I do have a video where I outlined how I built a little mini RAID system for this exact purpose. I'll link it up below. Up below, I'll link it up above. So do you really need one of these machines? I would say absolutely yes. If you are a creative professional, Yes, you should have one of these machines. It will improve your life. It's one of the few times that a product comes out and you're like, yes, this is really going to improve my life. Now the question really remains, which of these are you gonna buy? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.